goodies, Jenny here. We're going to make a quick fruit cake. So in my pot here, I already went ahead with one pack of butter, which is really one pound of butter with four sticks in it. I used one and a half cups of white sugar and I cream it really nice and beautiful in here. You see that? I already added seven egg yolk. Uh, that's uh, medium size. Or if you have large eggs, you're going to use five. If you have extra large, you're going to use four extra large. So here I have that egg yolk in there and I grated up here some nice little nutmeg. And this is the white of the egg. Give it a nice beat and set that on the side. So now to this, I'm going to make a lovely fruit cake, you know. Thanksgiving is here and um, Christmas is coming up. So in here, I'm going to add some cinnamon. And that is a half a teaspoonful with another half a teaspoonful right here is one teaspoonful of uh, cinnamon. And to this now, I'm going to add baking powder. So it's foodies, now we're going to add two teaspoonful of baking powder. That's one teaspoonful, two teaspoonful of baking powder. And I'm going to add a half a teaspoonful of clove. If you have powdered clove, you could go ahead with that, just like so. And I'm going to add some vanilla. You could eyeball one teaspoonful or one and a half teaspoonful of vanilla extract in there. And of course, my secret, Angostura bitters. One, two, three. Give it a nice little shake in the bottle. Very earthy from the house of Angostura from that beautiful island of Trinidad and Tobago. In goes that. Now we're going to be making a lot of noise now, foodies. So let me get this all mixed in. My little secret, my dear foodies, I'm going to put two drops of lime and two drops of wild orange oil from doTERRA. This gives it a really, really nice uh, flavor. Instead of putting like the, le the lemon zest or orange zest, you could use that. Or if you have this, you could use this. Foodies to this recipe is three and a quarter. That's one, two, three and a quarter cups of all purpose flour. You're going to sieve it really nice one at a time, just like so. And then we're going to start this noisy machine. But little secret, just give it a little spin because all this flour is just going to splash on your face. There you go. Okay, foodies. So we don't want to overbeat our cake. So here it is. You don't want to overmix that cake. That is when your cake becomes crumbly after you bake it. It's because it has been overbeaten. So here I have that egg white that I separated. We're going to add them in now. You can add it in two portions into the cake. And then we're going to start this hand mixer and get it all incorporated. So foodies here. So foodies here we are now. So I'm going to add the black stuff which is the molasses or some of you may prefer to use um burn sugar i do not like the burn sugar I like the molasses it also have a sugar because it's a byproduct of sugar cane so it give you some sweetness that is why i cut back in the sugar now what i like to do i like to add some jam so here i have some concord grape jelly some dark jam i'm going to put in two tablespoonful of jam into my cake and i'm going to give that a good mix with the spatula this is the black color that I got from my molasses. Now, it's all about preference. is how dark you want your, your cake to be. So, I use my hand spatula to mix it because I don't want to overbeat it with the cake mixer. So, in here, I have my fruits that have been soaking. This is two years old. So, I'm going to add in a cup and a half of these fruits now into my cake. Then I have some chopped fruits that I would also like to layer my cake when I start putting it into my pan. Fresh chopped fruits, and I'm going to show that to you. So this is about a cup and a half. You could make it as beautiful as you like. Wow, this smells so divine. It's a lot of spice rum in here that I brought from the islands that I soaked the fruits. So I have different years. I have spice rum, mango rum, pineapple rum. Some are just a Taylor Port wine. You could do, you could do creative, be creative when soaking your fruits. So in here is that fruits. And now let's get this all mixed up, mixed in together. Okay, foodies. So here I have some chopped cranberries. I give it a nice rough chop. I have some tutti frutti, rough chop, some red cherries, maraschino cherries, a rough chop. This is not the one in the, in the syrup. This is the sticky ones in the container. Let me show that to you. 
so when you're shopping, you will pick up the right stuff because if you don't pick up the right stuff, you wouldn't get a good outcome of our cakes. This is the one in the very thick, heavy. There's some syrup in the bottom there, but not the liquid one that you will put on your desserts. And this is a tutti frutti again. You see how they are? There you go. Rough chop there, and I have some um, raisins here, rough chop. So here, what I want to do, I want to just sprinkle a little touch of ginger powder, just a tiny bit, and a tiny bit also of cinnamon powder. There you go, just a little bit. What this will do, this will just loosen up our fruits because you know it's pretty sticky with the honey or syrup or whatever that they process it with. So I want it to be a bit loose, just like so. This is perfect. It's like um, a quarter tablespoonful or one eight teaspoonful, sorry, of those two powders, ginger and um, cinnamon. So in here in our foodies, you know Jenny like to recycle so here i have that butter paper in the bottom now this is a non-stick pan you do not need to do this but i'm going to be doing a shipping i'm going to ship these two cakes and i'm going to show you step by step how we're going to prepare this cake for shipping not just a cake for christmas you could send it off for your friends too so this is the butter paper i just take it and i put it all around my pan then i cut the other one in thirds one two three pieces here so what this will do it will hold my cake together so when i dredge that after baking and i have to take it out now that cake wouldn't break or break or fall apart it has a little structure here to hold that cake together in place as we be moving and wrapping and shipping so a little tip there for you so as we move over here now i have my butter so now we're ready to assemble our cake okay foodies so Give it a little mix there that was just some drippings here from the nice little mix over and over nice little turn because i had it sitting here while i was preparing my pans so i just want to move it up a little bit there you go now i want you to look at that you see the way that falls let me get a side view let's get a side view on how this is falling you see that that is the way I wanted that, that, that type of runniness. That is excellent. There you go. And remember now, when your cake bake, it is going to get darker. So there you go, lovely. I'm gonna, I love, this is my favorite part. I love this part. I have the cake mix and everything else, but for some reason, this pot cover fell and broke and I will not move away from this pot. I like to use it, especially when I'm using my hand mixer. I have the cake mixer, but I somewhat love the hand mixer more. I think I could control my baking better. So that's one eight inch round. Do it yourself, quick and easy Jenny style fruit cake. <laughs> and this is another one for shipping. We're gonna ship this two cake out, beautiful cake. We have Thanksgiving cake and we also have Christmas cake. Everybody love a beautiful cake, a nice dessert. Who don't? How easy was that? So this is my marvelous cake. So remember this now, my dear foodies. We're just going to give it a nice little topping, just like so. Don't want too much bulk. So let's get rid of some of those bulkiness there. Second cake, switch over a little bit on this side. Now this is not going to go down to the bottom. This is more of a tough cake. There you go, marvelous. Some of them will sink a little bit during baking, but remember our fruits that we add, that we have soaking there for two years is also a bit chunky in there. And there you go, marvelous cake here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give it a little pack. One, two, three. This is really to get any air bubbles out. Another one, one, two, three, four. Now, I like to bake my cake low and slow. So we're going to put this now into oven. I'm going to go today. I have a lot of time in my hand. I'm going to go 300 degrees in that convec bake, convectional bake, which with the heat is distributed evenly. Now every oven bakes differently. Everybody oven is a bit different. This cake is going to rise. That is why I put the paper a little over the lip. As you see, this is, as you zoom in here, my dear, you will see where my finger is. This is where it is. And you see the amount of excess I have for it's about an inch here for the cake when it get a rise it will get a rise 
okay my dear foodies and i'm going to also put a, pan, a baking dish with water in there so you have a nice steam flowing evenly into this lovely cake that we're going to be baking here at jenny's walk don't forget to like and share this lovely video subscribe to my youtube channel and let's get all this baking begin so into the oven now 300 i think this is going to take us about an hour or a little more or when the toothpick comes out clean as i say everybody oven is different okay foodies here you go convex roast convex bake sorry and in the bottom there as you can see i have my pan with water in there that is the part i'm telling you about your old burn up dish keep it them always have use for them put it in there with some water your two week in there 300 let's go so here foodies those lovely cake all out of the oven as soon as it comes out of the oven i give it a good dredge down with one of this uh, this is any alcohol and wine you want to mix here i'm using a nice white rum as requested by the person who is purchasing the cake with sherry so i did a 50 50. this is my second bottle the first one is as soon as it comes out i'm still going to leave this in the pan this is pretty much cool it have been two hours it have been dredged out of the oven so again another 50 50 and I'm going to leave it, let it soak overnight. And tomorrow I'm going to take this out and I'm going to show to you how you're going to package your fruitcake for shipping here at Jenny's Walk. Don't forget to like and share this lovely video with your friends and family and start inviting to join in into Jenny's Walk. So my dear foodies, I'm going to show to you how to wrap your fruitcake for shipping. Whether it's going to another state, another country, or just down to Manhattan on the train or the subway. So you're gonna take your fruit, your fruit cake out as you look on the side over here. Remember we put all these little barriers on the side over here. You take it really nicely out from the pan. We make a nice little bottom or you could buy it. That's a very, it's very sturdy in the bottom there. So leave this on here and we're gonna leave the one on the bottom. So you're gonna tell your people what, when they receive it to take this out when they receive it from shipping. So now it's on cling wrap. You put it to sit inside the cling wrap, get everybody inside, fold this down because we don't want to damage our the ends of our cake. And this is this is really dredged nicely. So it's a bit moist, very moist. So you have to be very carefully with this cake before you break your cake. So I'm gonna give it a good wrap this way. Under there. I'm gonna cut this off now. Tuck it up really nicely all around. You want to see it. Now we're going to do the same thing the opposite direction. So put that on the side. Let's open it this back again. There you go on your working surface. Now you see this is the open part. This open part now is going to be on the closed part. So now you're gonna bring your cling wrap again. You want tight, but not to damage the ends of your cake. You see in that tension we have there? You see the tightness of the snugness of the cake. Then you go again, you roll the bottom right-handed. So I gotta switch it. There you go, just like so. And another beautiful wrap. I'm gonna cut this off and put this piece in the bottom of the cake. Just like so, tuck it in the bottom. This is the bottom of your cake here. This is all so firm and nice and secure. Now put the cakes to the side, just like so. And there you got your fruit cake all ready to go into another state. I put this on here and I'm gonna rest my second cake there. And here I have my box. Um, domestic shipping, you know, priority mail, all of them, doesn't matter how much weight you have in there, the price is going to be the same. So let me finish the second cake and then we're going to go, I'm going to show it to you how we finish in this up. Okay, foodies, so this is a nine inch foil pan and this is my cake right here. So I'm going to put this cake in, give a little tuck, just a little tuck, it fits in there really nicely, very snug. So this is an eight inch cake and after it's all wrapped up it's going to be nine inch and this is the second cake here you could put it in there because we have this um 
the stick part in there. And I have my bubble wrap here that we're going to bubble it up. I think I better bubble them separately. Yeah, let's bubble them a bit separately so we'll keep some tension out. One there, and then I put the second one. right in there so before I seal it up now we're going to check our box and see how we fit in with the box again give it a trial there we go that looks perfect and we're going to put another piece on the top so this looks marvelous so let's take it out now and stick it up so foodies there you go we stick it all up on the side here tuck it really nice get that tape and stick it really beautiful and strong nice little bubble nice little tension in there so now into our box there you go just like so and we have all this lovely stuff that we're going to tuck and secure the cake all around so let me get this finish up there you go my foodies really beautiful nice and tight snug on the sides where the cake is really went down the corners here and here because it's a round cake and you put your cake in there and now you're ready to tighten up and put your address in just like so to and from jenny's walk right here and this priority mail box that holds two cake is uh, right now is 1660 for shipping holds two lovely eight inch cakes so here you go, another marvelous idea. You know, here at Jenny's Walk, we had to learn, we had to share. And I'm sharing my little ideas I have here with you for the season. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas time, everybody wants their cake. All you bakers who like to bake and send your cake for your family. Or if you want one from Jenny's Walk, not a problem, inbox me. Thank you for joining me. From my kitchen to your kitchen. Happy cooking.